Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Ooh, my voice sounds a little rough, probably because I haven't been recording over the last week very much, except for Sat Chat, because um, I was ill on New Year's and um, it took me a while for my voice to rebound. But I thought, you know what, I'm kind of feeling a little down and I thought maybe if I just kind of get out some supplies, play without any sort of um, preconceived ideas or expectation, then um, that might pull me out of it. And if you're struggling this time of year, maybe it'll help you too. So that's what I'm hoping for. If that's not your thing and you don't want to watch this, I totally get it. That's It's going to be a long video. It's probably, it's not going to be jam-packed with artsy action and um, and all of that. So if that's not your, your jam, that's totally fine. And it's freezing. It's cold. I just, I just went outside. I walked in the nice bright sunshine. Uh, it was like, um, I don't know, the, the wind chill is like seven and it was like maybe 15 degrees. Um, so the furnace is going to keep coming on. I have no control over that. I don't want to freeze out my daughter who's here on school break. So, um, as, as long as you're cool with all that, then let's make some art. Let's just have some fun. Uh, when I did my um, review preview video a couple weeks ago, the set, stamp set from Darkroom Door came very highly requested to use first. And a couple people said they didn't know what to do with the stamps when they got them when they came in a sheet like this. So I thought I would, um, I thought I would show you how to trim them. So generally, you just want to do short snips and. Um, you can use regular scissors for this as long as they're nice and strong and sharp, but I would recommend if you're going to do all, if you're going to buy a lot of unmounted stamps, I recommend these scissors. They are the K-A-I. Um, I don't know if they're pronounced Kai. I always just spell it, spell it out K-A-I, uh, scissors, and they do cost a bit. I think these were about $20 when I got them several years ago and they were from scrapbook.com but you can I'll see um, I'll see where they're available and I'll link to them if they're I'll link to them on scrapbook.com if they still have them and I'll link to them on Amazon if they have them and if not I'll try to find maybe Blick has them I don't know but they're they're a short bladed really strong scissor um, yeah K-A-I stainless steel made in Japan these are wonderful and so I uh, you could take the paper, maybe it's easier to trim them with the paper off, but uh, I usually just trim them together. Now, honestly, when I buy unmounted stamps, if I have the, if the, if I have the option, I just buy the rubber and I put some Aileen's Tacket over and over on the back and I just use them kind of raw rubber on my acrylic blocks that way. It's cheaper, um, but a lot of, but you do get, you know, especially if you're not, um, if you don't stamp that much or you haven't stamped that long, you might not get as good of an impression. The cushion on the stamp does help it give you a better impression. But so what I do is I will stamp on a cushioned pad, like a piece of fun foam, or I actually have like a stamping pad that's basically like a thick fun foam that I'll stamp on or I'll stamp on like a sketchbook or something where I have like a, a nice uniform uh, surface because it will, it, it'll make you have a good impression. So basically if you, if you don't have foam, if you don't have, um, the foam on your stamp, then you want to make sure you stamp on a bit of a squish, squishy surface. So, yeah, so we're just going to trim these out. Hope you had a good holiday. Um, I feel like this is going to be a little bit like <laughs> of a crafty chat, a little bit of a podcast, a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, a little bit of an art therapy session. I'm not an art therapist. I'm not a mental health professional. <laughs> I'm barely an art professional, but uh, no, I do. I make my living as an art, so I guess technically I'm an art professional. <laughs> uh... But yeah, so short snips, that's what you want to do. So do you have some stamps to trim out? Do you get some, some stamps for the holidays, for the, like for Christmas? I, I feel like you give a much better selection of stamp availability if you're willing to do the work of trimming your stamps out because there's a lot of companies out there that sell unmounted sheets. Um, and that's where you find the really weird quirky stuff that I love. Like uh, if you really love the weird, uh, Viva Las Vegas stamps has some really real good doozies, real real weird stamps that are fun. Um, they're not all safe for work though. I'll tell you that if you have delicate sensibilities, I would avoid that website, but um, I don't know. I guess I'm a bit subversive. So I do like <laughs> their stamps. I bought a grab bag once though, and I was not able to use most of the stamps because A, it's like, whoa, I would never put that on a card for somebody. And, uh, it's, and I certainly couldn't show it on my very safe for work YouTube channel. <laughs> But they do have some really interesting stuff, um, especially if you like vintage stuff, if you like sci-fi, if you like the subversive, you're going to like Viva Las Vegas stamps. I actually have a friend who got to go to that store when they were in Las Vegas. And I have to say, if I ever made it to Las Vegas, that definitely would probably be 
a highlight. Have you seen that there's like a really big like dome or sphere or something in Las Vegas now? It's a, uh, I think it's just called the sphere. And um, I don't know, it's very weird. It kind of reminds me of something you would see in science fiction. Uh, like something you'd see in Brave New World or Logan's Run or just, I don't know. It's, it's, it seems weird. It seems almost like this dystopian waste of, of, uh, of space. Honestly, it seems like it's, it seems like it's just, it's just like a, like a rotating 365 degree advertisement, like billboard, which I don't know. It seems like, yes, we have this great technological advancement. We, have, we were able to build this really amazing thing, but this really amazing thing now needs to make some money and, um, and so now it's going to, we're going to take this thing that could be really amazing and really awesome and we're just going to monetize the crap out of it. Which I understand. I mean, people don't make things to lose money on them. I get that. It's just, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking about stuff like that a lot lately. I just listened to the audiobook, uh, The Machine Stops. And it was a novella and it was actually written in 1909, I think. Or nine, I think it was 1909. It was before Brave New World. I think Brave New World might have gotten some inspiration or Aldous Huxley might have gotten some inspiration from that novella. But anyway, um, the, the gist of it is humans are living underground in these little rooms, basically. They each have their own room. They've got a little screen where they can... And this was 1909 or 1919. It was way before like television and all these like modern marvels, but somebody thought of this back then. Um, so people are living alone in their own little, um, their own little cubicle, basically, they are, you know, when they want food, the machine brings them food. When they want to reach out to somebody, the machine connects them. Somebody will know like about a thousand people, but they don't have any direct connection with them. They just like can talk to them through the screens. Um, nobody has any desire to be around another human. It's, um, it's just really, it's, I don't know, it's really dystopian. It's really kind of sad. Nobody feels the need to directly observe anything anymore. They're just, they'll just observe things through their screens. They have no desire to go up to the surface of the earth. They have no desire to visit anybody. It's just, um, it's just really, I don't know. It's, it's really sad. But anyway, uh, people do procreate. People do like, they'll have like an appointment or something. They'll be called up to have a baby and they will. And, uh, you could save the little scraps to make stamps out of, but I just know me and I know I won't. So off they go. Uh, I'm going to work on some, on our greeting card. Now, so these are the Strathmore greeting cards. I really like them. They're cellulose, but they perform really well. What you want to do is look for the side that's got the deep, the, the dip, the um, indent on the crease. And that's what you fold against the indent. That's the right side of the paper. I'm going to use, uh, I think watercolor crayon on this. I got them handy. I'm only going to use things that I can reach <laughs> today. So I've got my tin right here. I do enjoy these. I need to use them more. I'm thinking that maybe this year will be the year of favorites and I'll just start using my favorite supplies. That said, I have a backlog of stuff I've agreed to review. So I keep thinking I should go and review these older things that I absolutely adore. But on the other hand, um, everybody knows about those products. So I don't know, people seem to love to see the new and the new and novel, but then again, it's like, do I want to promote that? Do I want to be part of this dystopia? Uh, so anyway, this, the story commences, um, no, the story, the story begins with this woman who her son has contacted her and wants her to visit him. And she's like, why would I want to visit you? I can talk to you in this, the screen, you know, what do you need me for? And he's just, you know, he's having a crisis. He's, you know, he wants more out of life. And he wants to see the surface of the world. And uh, so finally she agrees to meet him and she takes an airship, which I think is like a plane from the, you know, old times. So this is way in the future from where we are right now. I, they didn't say what year it is, but, um, but it's way in the future. Maybe they did say, and I just didn't pay attention. I need a stamping block. Uh, excuse me as I walk across the room and get a stamping block. I'm telling you what, guys. I'm just going to put this up on YouTube. We'll see what happens. <laughs> There we go. This one should be big enough for all of them. So maybe not within reach, but within steps anyway. Um, so she decides to go and see her son, even though she's kind of being a witch about it. 
uh, I got some water here. I'm gonna also use some new Christy Rice stuff that was also really heavily requested. Uh, this is a collapsible water pot. Ooh, ASMR baby, get the crinkles. I'm gonna go to the top of YouTube with this. <laughs> get ASMR. I got random story time, ASMR. Let's bring out all the old YouTube trends. So this is the collapsible painter's pot by Paint Crush or Christy Rice. Look at this cute thing. It's like, uh, reminds me of those collapsible water dishes you get for your pup that you can like, you have a, on a carabiner and you can put it on your, like on your, um, you can clip it to your jeans when you walk your dog so you can, you know, give them a drink out of your water bottle. Uh, so, oh, look at that. It's got two compartments, which is going to be great. We're going to do some watercoloring too. We're going to do a little fusion, a little, a little stamp and a little watercoloring. It's actually pretty good sized. These are pricey. That's the only drawback, I think, to this. But actually, I don't know if that's the only drawback because I'm just using it now. This is not a review. This is uh, this is me creating for however long, however long I feel like it. Um, oops, that's going to make a shadow on our card. We don't want that. Let's move that over there. All right. So I'm going to just take some, I'm take some water and brush it on this stamp. And I'm going to take this lovely Caran d'Ache watercolor crayon and I'm going to color it. So anyway, she uh, she goes and sees her son. Now her son has been up to the surface, but he did not get proper um, permission to go up to the surface from the machine. And so he is kind of in trouble because he didn't go the proper way. He found a kind of like a back door to go to the surface. Oh, I'm also gonna try these Christy Rice brushes. And so he was also, because like people are, you know, they're living in their little, their little rooms. They're not moving around. They're sitting in their chair all the time. Kind of like Wally, honestly. And they don't have muscle strength, right? And if anybody is shown to have an athletic build or an athletic disposition when they're babies, they're terminated. So I don't know how nobody's made a movie on this. I just love doing this. I'm going to pull this in. This would be a nice little helper. If you're like, maybe you're someone who's loving doing loose florals. And um, and you feel maybe a little bit intimidated to do the drawing. I think this would be kind of a nice thing, a nice thing for you because then you can have this this. Uh, oh, I love doing that. I can have this little bit of um, a little bit of a kind of crutch. Now, isn't that a pretty little bottle? I love that. Now, the nice thing with the watercolor crayons is you can actually get, maybe I shouldn't bother folding these. I should just work on them flat. Let's see if we can get another impression here. Yeah, look at that. We get another impression. This one will be a little bit lighter. I've wanted these stamps for so long and I'm so glad I bought them. I'm having joy. I've been like really feeling the color drained from my life lately and I just I think it's winter I feel ashamed to say it because uh I have everything you know um so it you know you just feel so ungrateful to say something like that but then again I'm thinking well there's probably other people out there that feel the exact same way so why not say it all right that's pretty let's um let's try another bottle I like that. Uh, so to clean these, I would just, you know what I'll probably do at the end of the day? I'll just go upstairs, I'll take a toothbrush and clear water and just scrub the pigment out of them. It's not a, uh, it's not difficult. Let's do this one here. Because they're water soluble. They're not, it's not like I'm using acrylic paint. If you were using acrylic paint, you could do this, but you need to definitely need to clean them right away because you don't want to get any paint stuck in the nooks and crannies of your stamp because then it's not going to stamp very well when you do that again. Um, so let's do, let's do the same technique. And these, uh, the Christy Rice products, I, the Christy Rice products were sent to me. Christy reached out and asked if I'd like to try them. The, uh, the Dark Room Door stamps I bought on Amazon and I paid around $20, $21, $22. So it wasn't a cheap stamp set, but it's real rubber and I know I'm going to be able to get a lot of good impressions with whatever material I decide to use. I thought this will be as dark as I want it, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see. You know what? Uh, I think this might be a little too tall for this. I might stamp a couple. Let's stamp a couple jars on this one, maybe. Yeah, I think I will, because I think that's not going to be a very good com composition if I just use that by itself. Oh, I like that, though. Let's also do... Yeah, 
let's do that one. I hope I'm keeping that straight. It's kind of hard to keep it straight when you're, uh, I'm going to grab another stamp block when you are, um, is that big enough? I hope. Eh, we'll make, eh, not really. <laughs> I was like, we'll make it work. No, we won't. No, we won't. We'll get another block. Um, yeah. So if you're struggling, if you're struggling this, uh, this time of year, no, you are not alone. We all do, but you know, best way, best way out of it is through it, right? You just gotta, I don't know. Actually, I don't know what the best way is. Don't take my advice. My best way is just to, you know, force my way through it, I guess. I'm gonna do red, I think, for this one. Red's my favorite color. Uh, and red should be a lucky color for me this year of the dragon. I guess the year of the dragon doesn't start till next month, but who knows when this video is gonna go up. Let's see, I'm gonna put that one up a little bit higher and it's gonna be behind that vase there. So I'll have to drag some of the other vase color in front. Although red wants to advance because of the, the it's a warm color. But I'm gonna to have to make the blue bottle look like it's in front. So I will do that by adding some of that red kind of like smeared around a little bit inside the bottle. So the blue one looks in front. All right, let's set that one aside. Maybe I'll do one using those two bottles, but maybe add a third bottle in too. So let's see, what's the third bottle I might want to use? Oh my word, could I just grab enough stamp mounts to begin with? Seriously, guys. But you know what? This is real life. This is real crafting. No, I don't have it all together. Nobody does. Well, maybe somebody does, but not me. All right, let's do this one in the middle. I think I might want to make that a little bit darker. Let's do, let's do a little bit of that first blue that we used on the other stamp. We'll just add it to what we have there. And stamp. Oh gosh, I think, do I have that crooked? Mm. Didn't really stamp that very well. I didn't have that paper wet enough, but that's all right. I can drag. Oh shoot. Ah, we're fine. I think it's just kind of like magic. You add the water there and it just kind of does its thing. Let's do the red. Uh, I think it will. You could also dip the crayons in the water and add it that way. I got this calendar for Christmas from uh, one of my clients and it's a daily calendar. It's got a bunch of flowers and I thought that might be really kind of a fun inspiration thing. So I'm going to use that and maybe this one like a nice bright greeny, greeny color. Maybe this color green or maybe something a little bit more green. Oh, what about this? Maybe I'll add another green to it. Yeah, so anybody that shows any sort of physical um, ability gets uh, gets terminated. So that everybody, so there's this docile race of people, basically. And I don't want to say how the how the story ends, but I mean, it's, it's a novella. It doesn't take that. I, I listened to the audiobook. It's free on YouTube. It's, a, it's a, in the public domain, and it was a LibriVox. Uh, I'm not so sure about this little composition, but it's a LibriVox production. The, the, where I dropped the brush made a little swirl, made a little kind of little skittle of water go out. I'm all right with that now. I've decided I'm good to be all right with whatever I create today. Push that back by bringing some of that color in. This one needs to be in front, so I'll have to redefine that later. All right, maybe we'll turn our paper this time and we'll do a little row of smaller bottles. Um, and again, just, I'm just gonna stay with the same color so I don't have to wash my stamps. 
So anyway, that's kind of, I've been thinking about that. And what, what are we doing as modern humans? And how are we living our life? And are we living the best life? And, you know, all the existential stuff that you think about in the winter and in the new year when you're, you know, new year, new you, better you, trying to improve, trying to be a better person. Um, let's see, I've got these two I haven't done yet. I'm just going to take that right off the mount. And that mount is just a smidgen too little. So let's do this one. Let's see. What color do we want to do here? Maybe like a cobalt blue. I love cobalt blue glass. Ooh, my hand's in the way. Out of practice, I tell you. Out of practice. This would be a nice one. Yep, these are... I love dark, dark room door stamps. They have a lot of stamps that are like... Um, uh, I should have stamped that one over there and then I could have easily have placed the other one in the center. They have a lot of stamps that are like frames, like things you can stamp in other things. And I love stamps like that. Stamps that I can mix with other stuff I own and make my other things more useful. So when I'm adding something to my stash, I try to think, is this going to duplicate what I already have or is it going to make it more useful? Now, because I do a lot of reviews, I end up with a lot of things that are just like the same but from a different company or um, not really an improvement so much as it is just an alternative. Oh, I still have this one I haven't used yet. I should have done that one in there. Ah, no shoulds. No shoulds. Banish the word. Banish the word. Banish the word, sh word should from our vocabulary. That's pretty, isn't it? I think I'll just leave the crayons that I've used out so that it will be easy to find them. If your paint is getting too thick, just rinse your brush off. And I like to put the next the neighboring color in because with um with bottles, glass bottles, they just grab all the other colors. Oh, by the way, my watercolor glass class is on special till the end of January. If you are interested in learning how to watercolor glass, like paint glass in watercolor, um, I've got a coupon code. I don't remember what it is, but I'll put it in the video description and it's for 40% off the class if you would like to check it out. Grab some of that blue, bring it over here. I feel like that just adds so much than just like a basic stamping design. Now you could use your flower stamps in that same manner. Just uh, ink them up with a watercolor or a watercolor crayon and stamp them and then, um, you know, do the whole thing in this, in this method. I'm just um, trying to put some brush miles in and do a bunch of, I'm just going to do some like, kind of loose florals. Also because I'm using going to use the Christy Rice stamps um she is the you know she does a lot of loose florals and i think that's kind of fun uh let's do another one of those i want to use um use up the stuff that's on ah use up the stuff that's on our blocks maybe purple I usually don't see purple glass. Isn't that funny? I wonder if it's one of those colors that doesn't fire very well. Although we have purple glaze, so I don't know. I think most of the bo color bottles I have are actually... Uh, they're actually, like, painted. They're not, like, fired glass. Don't worry if you don't get a great impression, because... You can... You can uh, drag your color around. You don't actually even need the, the stamp mounts for that. I'm gonna put this one over here so I can easily line stuff up. Okay, do I want yellow? Actually, yellow might be a nice little kind of pop of difference. 
I don't know if that's wet enough though. You could use a spray bottle. I like the brush so far. I like the water pot so far. I'm used to my um, my paint puck rinse cups. Oops, I don't seem to have like a little neck on that one. This one's crooked. We might have to do a little, little straightening up of some of these if I didn't stamp that very carefully. Because it's getting a little bigger too. <clears throat> what else? Watching something. Oh, I watched um, the movie Midsummer the other day. <laughs> kind of shows you where my where my mind has been. I'm watching, uh, listening to uh, the machine stops. Watching Midsummer. I also want to watch um, Saltburn. That's on my next to watch before my Amazon Prime trial runs out. Uh, but anyway, Midsummer was very bizarre. Um, but it had a, a theme that I thought was interesting and similar to the theme I saw in another another movie, um, Logan's Run, where the elders just volunteer to go away, you know? Um, I don't want to say the, I don't want to say the world, I'll get, I'll get demonetized, but, um, and that was also, that's also a theme in Brave New World, where you know, they have all these technological advances, they keep people healthy and alive, and then before anything can break down, people are kaput. So, it's uh, it's interesting, and then you kind of wonder, is that going to happen with our civilization? <sighs> okay, let's go back to our first card here, and oh, that's that's drying up nicely. Actually, let's open up our Christy Rice watercolors. This is the Art for Joy Sake palette. Um, it's in a nice printed box. Got a picture of Christy on the back. Christy is a YouTuber and a stationery designer. Um, there's, it seems like there's been a lot, I don't know a lot, but there's, there's quite a few um, YouTubers that were stationary designers doing like a loose floral type um, uh, style. And she has her own watercolor set. And I think it's very popular because it's kind of fresh and free and uh, look how pretty that is. Making art for joy's sake. I think that's what I needed to do today. And I really don't know Christy personally, other than just kind of occupying, we occupy a very similar space on YouTube. It comes with a watercolor paper swatch card, which is nice. Sometimes swatch cards, and I don't know if they are, her sets always came with this. I know this, uh, she was, she, when she contacted me and asked if I'd like to try it, she um, said she was working on some improvements to the set. And I'm going to put on my reading glasses because uh, my, I, I had COVID like um, on New Year's, a couple days before New Year's Eve. And my vision has been a little blurry since then. There, much better. Because generally, I can get by without my glasses or my progressives. Um, so just looking to see if there's pigment information there. I don't see any. These are all good. I don't even have to unwrap them. They're all ready to go. Let's do a little swatching. Let's use one of her brushes. She also sent me both of her brush sets. Let's look at the other one. This is the Fear Has No Place here, and I used this brush from it. Like I said, not a review for this is first impressions only. Really sweet little brush bag. Sometimes just finding something that makes you excited to paint is what you need. I'm not going to expect these to be the highest quality um, just because of their price point. I think that sets around $40 online and um, and to be an independent artist producing these yourself, I mean, it's a, uh, it's expensive. It's expensive to do that. So, all right, let's see. Uh, I don't know what the colors are. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so tend is the teal. I'm trying to figure out how to. All right, I'm going to hold it like this because I think this corresponds with the way they are in the pan, in the uh, 
in the bucket. So uh, I'm just going straight from, well, that's pretty. It's a pretty color. It's like a teal color. That will look nice. That will, that's a nice bottle blue. Now the next one is Delve. That's a pretty brown. It's kind of like a burnt sienna color. So this might be a little, um, a little tricky if you're used to fierce. I love that color, like a coral red. These are pretty. These are pretty. I had my, I had my doubts. Um, just looking at the little pans of color, but I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna just have fun here with this sweet, which is a sweet kind of portrait pink color. Because the pans don't, I mean, looking at the, the pans of paint in the palette, they, ooh, calm is kind of like a buff titanium color. They don't look that impressive. Uh, fearless, which is a neon yellow. Whoa. That is vibrant. Fierce and fearless. Sir, this is just perfect because <laughs> I am trying to feel a little bit more, more fearless these days. Last year, the year of yes, I felt so bold and brave. And this year, I don't know. Granted, the year's just started and I started off with COVID. I, I'm feeling much more self-conscious and... <laughs> Inca uncapable. I don't know. I guess probably everybody does. Uh, punchy. That's punchy purple. Punchy purple. Purple's not my favorite color. Passion, which is a nice fuchsia color. I love the word passion. I always try to do things that I'm passionate about. I'm trying to find my passion again. I know I'm so dramatic, aren't I? Uh, Blossom. This looks like a Jean Brilliant which is not one of my favorite colors. Actually, it's kind of more of a, um, on paper, it looks more like a um, Caucasian skin tone. I'm concerned I might not have the value range I need. Growth, that's a nice sap green color. But we'll see. I think it'll definitely be adequate for these cards. And Thrive, this looks like a kind of a green gold color. All right, so let's take a look here. We have um, not exactly a, a mixing set, but let's do a little mixing and see what we can get. I have these, uh, I've been using these postcards that I bought. What a, I, I actually looked for a review because they are not great, but you know what I use them for? I use them for doing just color mixes and stuff like that. I almost use them as scrap paper. For that, they're fine. And let's do some color mixing here. I bought these on Amazon. It was a pack of a hundred and it was, they weren't that expensive for what they were, but they weren't what they said they were. They said they were a synthetic pro, uh, poly, like polypropylene paper. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Cause then I could do alcohol ink. I could do lots of fun things and I can, um, and I could use it for, uh, you know, make some really cool postcards and, that was my that was my thought. I'm gonna do a split primary here. Uh, I'm gonna try to anyway. So I got my two reds. Um, I'll have to use Thrive for my warm yellow. Even though it's not really warm yellow, but we're gonna see how it does because it definitely does have a green tint to it. <sighs> hmm. Maybe I should have used the neon. Well. Let's just, let's just stick with this. I've got so many of those postcards to use up. So then I take the postcards and then I've got these postcards with color mixes, swatches on it and stuff. And I'm like, well, those are still fun to layer onto a card and to use for stuff. So I don't throw them away. They're kind of like um, freedom to play. Uh, I'm gonna use this as my cool blue, even though it's kind of like a teal color. Uh, and I can use them layering them on cards. One thing that bothers me when I am not feeling my best and I'm in one of these moods is criticism. And granted, I post videos all the time. I'm a woman on the internet. I get a lot of criticism. Often it doesn't bother me, but when I'm in a mood like this, it totally, totally bothers me. <laughs> and there's, a, oh, that's a nice purple. Not that we need, a need to be able to mix a purple because we do have 
the uh, the purple in there, but I just like to see what I can get with the mixes. Add a little bit more of that color in there. Okay, let's do... Actually, what might be kind of fun to do is to mix those two colors together. I'm going to do it on my palette, though, the two, uh, the two blues. But this isn't a mixing set. I'm not going to say this is a mixing set, because it's not. I'm not going to expect it to be a mixing set, either. All right, let's do... I'm going to take a little bit more of that neon and bring it over. I like to mix on the paper, as well. And then, let me grab a little bit of the teal color. I don't know what this paint is. Uh, it reminds me of the old meat and pans. Ooh, that's a nice, a uh, nice green. Okay, more of this neon in there. That's a really glowy color. Very pretty. I think the fact there's so many cool undertone colors here, even that coral, that reddish color, is pretty cool in undertone. It's probably going to keep from a lot of mud happening, which is, which is good. I'm going to mix the two reds together and see what, what if we get a more neutral. It probably won't. Probably just be. It's kind of more of like a Quinn rosy color when I mix them together. All right, let's do our. I probably should have went with a fluorescent one. We'll see, we'll see what we get there. Uh, hmm, let's add a little bit more of the... That's kind of like a rusty color. It's kind of pretty, actually. Yeah, but not really what I call orange, but we'll do a little mix on the side. Now I want to mix both of those yellows together and see what I get. Gotta clean that pan a little bit. These do want to like, I wouldn't pre-activate these because they definitely want to really release. They release very easily. So, and if I do a little swirl in the center, we'll get our neutral tones as all of our colors mix together. This is not a really resilient paper. It looks kind of like a, that would actually be fun to die cut some petals out of, make a little flower out of or something. So see, you know, I feel like I'm getting a little, I'm knocking a little bit of my inspiration loose here. So let's do this neon and let's do the red and see if that gives us a better, a better orange. It does. Okay, the neon definitely does. So I'm thinking maybe it'd be better just to do a product, just a regular color wheel. Let me grab another one of those papers. We're just having a we're just having a time. We're having a little artsy play date. Oh, I have a new class coming, watercolor play date over at new. Speaking of play dates. Okay, so if I'm gonna do a primary color wheel, I'm gonna do fierce, fearless, and flow. Ha! <laughs> fierce, I wonder if she planned it like that. The three F's make a make a color wheel. So fierce, fearless, and flow. Let's do those. I feel like it, that would be a good name for triplets. Have you met my daughter Fierce? And this is Fearless, and this is Flo. Those, you could just tell, though, those girls would give you a lot of grief. That would not be an easy <laughs> trio to raise. <laughs> but you know they'd be okay, right? They'd be okay. That makes a good green. Let's yeah. see. I'm really I'm starting to make dents in the paint because it releases so easily. I think the big appeal to this set for most people is going to be oh, that makes a good purple though. I love that's kind of a pl a plummy a plummy purple. Um, add a little more blue. I think the appeal to this set, at least the appeal to me, was the beautiful the beautiful tin. Okay, that's going to give you more of like an eggplanty purple. Uh, so. I'm actually mix a little bit on the palette because that red is just so strong. Actually, that makes a pretty that makes a pretty good mixing mixing range right there. So, yeah. there we go. We got some decent primaries. Okay, I'm not mad at it. I'm actually 
I these are better than I expected, I've got to say. So that's a good that's a good a good feeling. All right, so I want to show you that calendar that I got. Uh, I didn't change the date since the fourth. So that's got some like little button flowers. This has got I don't know what that is because it's in Chinese and I don't recognize it. This one I don't know what that is either. It almost looks like a little too many petals to be like a cherry blossom or dogwood. I'm not sure what it is, but they're pretty. What is today? Today I'm filming this on the 9th or 10th, I think. I think. This, yeah, or the 8th. Yes, because Saturday was the 6th, so the 8th. That's today's flower. I'm going to leave that on my calendar. And I have some that I was just sketching in my sketchbook, trying to break through the, uh, the sludge the other day. So I'm just going to take these out. I'm going to use them as inspiration. Um, I'm not, I'm going to be doing some loose florals, so they're not going to be botanical like this, but just to kind of give me some, give me a little bit of inspiration. I wish I had more of a room to set this out. My table's gotten quite full. Let's throw all these stamps in a pile so I can wash them. And we'll spread these out and hopefully not soak them. I need to clean. I thought my desk was pretty clean, but I now know what that did. It's not. <laughs> That's what my mother would say. I would say something like, I think blah, 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 or I thought blah, blah, blah. And she'd be like, well, now you know what thought did. Don't really know what that means. <laughs> One of those things you hear in your head. All right, let's see. Actually, I think that I will work on this one. Actually, no, I'm gonna start with the first one. So I'm gonna clip these down as I work with them. Bored yet? I hope not. I'm not, I'm having a good time. Okay, what do we want in here? These are kind of pretty. This little, um, these little orchidy flowers. They're pretty. These are strange flowers. They're kind of pretty though. I think I want to use her cat's tongue brush. Find your weird. Number six cat's tongue. Oh, Christy, you're just the tonic I need today. I'm not going to be, I don't know. I'm going to see how I like these. I'm not going to be comparing them to other paints at the moment. Uh, let's start with a little bit of our sap green color called Growth. Growth. It's New Year, right? We all want to have, we all want to feel some growth. Right? I'm kind of a growth junkie. I'm a goal junkie and I don't know. I feel like having a growth mindset does lead to happiness, but also I think that can also lead to disappointment when we're not hitting our goals the way we think we ought to be. Ooh, I like this brush. Christy girl, this brush is great. <laughs> I will link to the brushes as well. Right off the top of my head, I'm not, uh, these are lovely. Um, I don't, I don't know what they cost right off the top of my head. Actually, you know what? It's kind of freeing to do this because usually when I'm doing a review, I've spent so much time working with a product and and um, so many days and so many moods and just kind of uh, going about it that way. This is kind of freeing, actually. I think I want to put a little bit of brown. Oops, I don't want to leave my brush in the water. Uh, let's see, because that brown is really lovely. It's kind of like a chocolatey burnt sienna brown. Get some of that in the stem. That's a nice color. And now, what was the flower? I was, I don't know. I'm not even doing the same stems. I'm just kind of like looking for inspiration. I don't know if I really like that one for inspiration. Let's just do. I'm trying to think, what would have a flower like that? What would have a leaf like that? Um, I don't know. Let's just do some little flowers. Let's use passion. Uh, I don't even know what shape I want these flowers to be. I'm do a little bit of red in there. A little make-believe flowers. 
flower petal has fallen on the ground. So sad. So sad. That's life. It's like all life. <laughs> it fell on the ground and dissolved into some weird puddle of goo, apparently. And maybe a little leaf fell on the ground too next to it. Like sands in the hourglass. All right, let's do. Yeah, I wish I should have. Um, I should have gotten more of a clue about what I wanted to do for a flower, but I'm just going to do some simple little, like star, shaped flowers, and we're going to call that good. We're going to call it fine. We're not going to shut ourselves to death. Should do this. Should do that. No, I'm not cussing. I'm like you sound like you're cussing. All right. Is this going to win a prize? No. Is it fine? Would it brighten somebody's day if I sent it to a friend? I think so. Does everything need to save the world? No. All right, let's add a little bit of a water line here. Actually using the paint and not the crayon for the, I could have used the crayon, but could not should, right? Could not should. Let's get some of that paint. Let's get some of that, um, paint color in there. Why not? I think one thing you might need to be aware of is because the paints do wear down kind of quickly and you get a lot on your brush, just to be careful that you're not getting more than you want. I'm not crazy about this color combination. But then again, I don't think it's awful. I think it's fine. How are your cards coming? Are you painting along with me? Are your cards coming well? You can also add a little bit of paint pen or something at the end or watercolor crayon. Get a little bit of a... A little bit of highlight, a little bit of like centers or something. I'm going to set this aside for now. I think it's fine. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Maybe try some of that neon yellow in the center. I like to light up the water sometimes, just like it's catching the light. Give it a little bit of vitality. Let's set it aside for a bit. I think it's fine. Let's keep on keeping on. Keep on trucking. Let's see. Then we had the, I don't want to do the double, we had the double one, but I think that I will move to another one. I'm going to grab that board though and clip it down and start another card. So I kind of have an idea for this one. I like the idea of like a branch kind of coming out and just kind of like, kind of shooping over like that. Um, I'm not sure what all will go in there, but I like the idea of, of branches. Maybe not of those flowers, but something like that. So I'm going to keep using that same brush. I'm really enjoying that. And I'm going to use some of that brown color. A little green to it. And... Yeah, I like that stroke. I don't know if I like the green in that paint though. My water, my rinse water is getting pretty dirty and to be honest I haven't been the best about uh, rinsing my brush in the same color or the same side each time so they're both getting a little bit a little bit uh, milky looking but I don't know I'm also I'm, I'm probably also going to be when I do the review which this is not the review but when I do the review I probably will be a little bit lenient knowing that it's a fellow YouTuber. Um, I'm not interested in... Uh, I'm not interested in being overly critical on somebody that 
is doing it on their own without the backing of a big company. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, but I'm not probably gonna, I'm not gonna be as critical as if like <sighs> Schmincke came out with a new palette or um, or any big legacy brand comes out with a big palette just because you, they have this humongous buying power. They have a humongous reach. It's just, you know, it's not fair. Anyway. I don't like it when people just do salty reviews just for the sake of, like, views and getting <sighs> rage baiting, which I'm seeing so much. Oh my word, I'm seeing so much rage baiting right now. There's, everybody was talking about this new social media platform that Instagram has come out with called Threads and first people are saying oh it's gonna be so great it's gonna be so positive and it's a great alternative to Twitter which I don't like Twitter because I feel like everyone's just yelling into the void over there um so I signed up for an account when it first came out and I kind of didn't really I don't know I, I went over there and looked around I'm like this is just it I don't know it just reminded me a lot of Twitter I don't really like Twitter or X or whatever the heck you want to call it now um, it's just not my cup of tea. It's not my people. It's not, I don't know. What, what sort of meaning can you do? It's like why I don't do TikTok. Why, what kind of meaning can you put in like a couple seconds? <clears throat> I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably not a TikTok fan either because you're watching me, you know, paint random things for hours. I like this. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking I might just leave this <laughs> without any flowers. I kind of just like the branches in a jar. Oh, I like that. What do you guys think? Uh, so anyway, but if you're on, if you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, they'll show little, um, like, snippets to try to get you to want to click over and open the app and check it out. And sometimes I do that. And I'm always disappointed in humanity when I do that because it's just like a bunch of people just trying to get people upset and clicking. And that's, and of course, that's what... That's, they're doing it because that's what they're promoting. That's what's getting people on the platform. And I'm sure that's why Facebook and Instagram, because they're, or, or Meta, the owners of Facebook and Instagram, who also own Threads, are, are showing us those things because that's what's getting people to click. But it's just like this, the worst common denominator, you know? It's like the, it's bringing out the worst in us. And people know it, like the creators know it. They're putting out these incendiary, comments to get people to click over and to get people to comment and and engage and that's like that's not how I want to spend my time I can't believe people choose to spend their time like this just to be they they want to be angry and they want to be have their anger justified and confirmed and I don't know and just becoming delusioned disillusioned with uh society. Hmm. I don't know if I like that I added the extra color on the bottles, but I kind of like the idea of just the, the naked branches here. So I think I'll set, maybe do a little bit more to the branches, but I think I'll set it aside and think about it because I think just the branches are kind of beautiful on their own. It is winter after all. Yeah, I think I'll just leave that for right now and then maybe come back to it and see if I want to do more to it. What's next? Let's unclip this and grab another one. Hopefully I won't get the backs all smudged because my fingers are... I don't know why I'm such a messy person. Like, even when I eat lunch, it's like my... I have to have like a napkin in my lap and a napkin, like, for my, <laughs> for my hands. I'm just so messy. Like, my hands are already, like, I've got paint, I've got water on them, I know I'm going to smudge something. I like this color combination, it's kind of happy and springy, it's almost kind of Eastery. I feel like we have lost so much community, we have this, we have the ability to reach out to anybody at any time, like in the, uh, the Machine Stops, but it's like a false, it's a false, uh community it's it's a false connection but it's easy 
And so like when the when the mother was like, why do I want to visit you? I can see right now. The, the son was like, I want to see you. And she's like, you can see me. You're seeing, I'm seeing you right now. I, why, why do you need me to come over? You know, and it was just so cold and so, and so harsh, but it's like, I don't know. It's, it's so, it was written over a hundred years ago and it's so prevalent. It's so accurate. Just like Brave New World, you know? I don't know what I'm going to put in these guys, but I'm just going to put some little branches and see what happens. Hopefully, this will be interesting enough that uh, the collection of these little cards will be, I don't know, will spark somebody's, somebody's interest. I don't know, I'd rather use my voice on YouTube to inspire people and not to enrage people. Give people something different to think about. Uh, let's see. You can also use watercolor crayons as a pan of paint, just by using the brush right on the, right on the, um, the tip here. One thing I've noticed about her brushes is that, like, I was looking for her brushes on Amazon, and they were advertising counterfeits of her brushes, like, right next to them, and it's like, come on. So, because, so it, it is hard to be a legit business person, I feel like, and succeed, you know? So that's another reason why. I don't know, I wanted to try these out just because that really, that really bugs me. You know, I understand an alternative, you know, but I mean, if you're going to buy a YouTuber's brush set, you're going to buy it because you like the YouTuber and you want to help them succeed so they can keep providing content. Content. We don't make art anymore. We make content. Everything is content. That's sad. I'm not an artist, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> you know, I don't, I always had a hard time with that distinction, with that uh, label. I don't know why, there's nothing wrong with being a YouTuber, but I feel like it also lumps you in with some unsavories. The clickbait. Ilk. I'm having an easier time painting for my imagination today because I've got the structure of the stamps. You know, I can build from that. When I did my uh, 30 Days to Better, no, what was it? No, the uh, watercolor glass class. When I did that, I just collected tons of colored bottles that I had. And then I put them in rainbow order for one of the still lifes. And I like that still life so much that I put it in the window of our addition so we have this eyebrow window that's kind of up above everything i don't know how to wash it it's like getting kind of the outside of the window is getting like i don't know you know it gets dust and dirt and stuff on it and you can't open it it's like a like a just a window but you don't open a window it's like a decorative window it's above the other windows and i don't know how to clean it because it's too high to reach so i don't know what to do about that but anyway up on that ledge, it's got a really thick windowsill, and I put all those bottles in there. And they're all in a rainbow row. And it makes me happy to look at. I'm going to wake up in the morning if the sun is shining, which it doesn't shine very often this time of year, it seems. Or I'm up too, I'm up too early before the sun's up, so I don't get to see it. But it's nice when I do wake up and there's sun and I can see it all bright. I 
thought about doing my uh, Jurgen's Natural Glow fake tan last night because I was like, oh, maybe if I looked in the mirror and I saw not such a pale face, I would be more uplifted. <laughs> We're supposed to get, we got snow yesterday, but we're supposed to get 50, we're supposed to get snow again Tuesday, which I don't know what day this is going to go up. It's Monday the day I'm recording this. Um, it'll probably go up on Wednesday. So on the day that this is coming out, it will probably be like 50 degrees and raining, which is weird. And I know that probably means bad things for our world, but I'm also kind of like, uh, 50 degrees, woohoo! <laughs> You know, can't change it. Nothing in my power can change it. All I can change is myself and my uh, reaction. So there's nothing else I can do about it. I'll do what I can, but I'll enjoy the 50 degrees, I guess. Well, that's not true. Let's be completely honest. I have... You know, I could stop um, stop buying our supplies. I certainly have enough. You know, stop having them shipped to my house. Stop posting things that tempt other people to buy more art supplies. I mean, yeah, I'm part of the problem, for sure. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that I'm not. Hopefully, the joy and wellness people get from any art project they do after watching mine or any art supply they buy after watching a review is uh, a net positive. Certainly worse things to spend your money on and spend your time doing. But yeah, I'm not innocent. I'm not an oil company mogul, but I certainly drive a car. Can't, can't claim to be innocent. Alright, those are kind of cute. So, I don't know... I'm thinking maybe we'll just do some, hmm, I'm thinking of like forsythia, uh, stuff that's kind of like just, I don't know, bushy, forsythia, for, <laughs> I can't say, forsythia though is big, big branches, and these look like small little jars, but you know what? This is going to be my little fantasy land. So, I'm just going to go ahead and paint some little dabs. So, everything I've showed you here is not anything you need um, drawing ability or a lot of painting ability. You just need a few supplies and you just need some. You need to give yourself permission to just play and not worry about the outcome. And ironically, I have an easier time doing that when I turn the camera on because at least I don't feel, I feel like I could possibly use this for something. So I guess I am somewhat worried about the outcome or, or just wanting to make sure that, like I might not finish it, I guess. If I wasn't filming, I might not even finish the project, but since I'm filming, it's kind of like, well... Don't want to waste it, right? Don't want to waste it. Ooh, don't think I like that. I don't think I like that at all, but what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep rolling with it. All right, you know what? I do kind of like that fuchsia plus the, um, plus the pink color. I mean, the, the fuchsia and the neon. Maybe let's try a different brush. What else we got? Oh, got this little tiny dagger here. It's out the sizing. Let's just uh, let's change that. Hmm, let's go. Some little petal strokes. I will say, these uh, brushes do make it really easy to do little fantasy flower strokes. Yeah, I'm really actually really having an easy time with this. 
and I'm not kind of go for I, I go from your imagination type person these days I'm kind of more of a uh, find a bunch of reference photos or work from life all right that's all right okay maybe add some little green leaves the this paint is interesting it dries with a very matte texture to the to the um, surface because I was kind of wondering if they were going to be mungio paints but they're definitely not so I don't know if they used to be because I heard some people speculate that um, like the uh, so I was thinking they might be similar to say the um, American Crafts watercolors and the Primo watercolors. Oh, look at those sweet little leaves. I like that. Um, but that doesn't, that's not the case. They're not. Just a couple little sweet little dropped leaves. All right, I'm not mad at that. I think that's all right. I like this little brush though, it's kind of sweet. Um, I think I'll just do some neon. On its own over here. Maybe I'll keep this one to be the Persithia one. I'm trying not to do the same strokes that I did for the other, the other branch. That color does give you a shock of brightness. I like that. They might do some splatter of that too. Um, maybe I'll do a little bit of a purple flower in there as well. And then, I don't know. I just don't like all the yellow now that I'm like looking at it. I'm kind of like, yeah. The colors don't beat up on the palette too badly. That's kind of nice. I'm just doing some little strokes. I'm not even really... Actually, little spikes of lavender would be cute. Lavender? Ooh, what's that accent? Yeah, I'm not sure this is going to be my favorite one, but we're going to finish it. We're going to finish them all because at the end of the day, it's still a cute card. Still a cute card, even if it's not exactly what you started out going for. But I really didn't have much of a much of a thought other than snap out of your funk, Lindsay. Life is too short for you to be so crabby. <laughs> and some supplies do that for you. You know that the those those stamps, these paints. They might not be the highest quality, most light, fast paints in the world, but if they get you moving, if they get the creative muse moving for you, then, then that's great. All right, some spatter, some spatter, some spatter. I wonder, oh, try, look at this brush. Isn't this pretty? This is a number 12 round Creative Rebel. I like the names. This is... These are probably going to be like, some people are going to be rolling their eyes, be like, Lindsay, you're ridiculous, that's ridiculous. But, I don't know. If it gets you in the mood to create, I don't think there's a problem. I don't think it's a problem at all. I need to clean my palette here. When in doubt, when in doubt, spatter, right? When in doubt, spatter. I'm 
looking forward to going to France and painting in May. They asked me to do a second week, which I agreed, um, which I agreed to, and there is spots, there are spots available in that second week if anybody is interested in joining me. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's, um, it's going to be really good to, to just have some time to create and get away. Oops, see how that dries. I don't know. It's not, it's, it's fine. It's not my favorite, but it's fine. I'm really looking forward to doing a sketchbook work. We're going to be, we're going to make our own sketchbooks. We're going to sew our own sketchbooks and um, work in our sketchbooks. I think that's going to be really, really fun, really wonderful. All right, now, what other, what's the next one we should work on? That's another one right there. I feel like I'd like a little more structure in some of these because they're kind of a little too whimsical. <laughs> Let's see, do any of these little photos I have spark joy? Maybe I need to sketch something instead of just instead of just going in willy nilly. Kind of like that. And I, and I could do that with a brush. Alright, that works. I like that little turned over petal. So we can do that kind of here. And then... Maybe just a bud in here. Mm, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Let's keep using this brush. This brush is kind of fun. I guess I'm feeling kind of minimalist with a lot of these designs. I think, I don't know, just because I'm feeling like the, uh, the depths and despair of winter. <laughs> or, you know, everything is just kind of like, I get inspired a lot by my surroundings, by nature, and when everything is just kind of dying <laughs> and uh oh that's pretty I like that I like the quality of that brush stroke um when everything around you is just kind of like eh, dead and brown it's it's kind of demoralizing then again it's like you kind of need that that despair to feel the joy of like summer maybe I don't know just cellulose paper by the way too. Uh, looks like you can see some little those little sepals or whatever poking through there. I'm much better if I have like a reference to work from. Even if I'm not really going from the reference, just having a little bit of a color or shape or you know some sort of little detail to go by I find it to be very much much help more helpful um, I want to get the side of that back so it will be in front and then the green needs to be in front of the blue yeah it's like I was I was watching um, 
a video this morning and somebody was showing their their favorite supplies of of uh, 2023 and I'm like oh that's nice that's positive it's not just a haul and so I kind of like that and the neo colors and I'm like yes why don't every time I use them I'm like why don't I use these more they're so wonderful so I'm like that would be good and I know like I tend to overthink and overanalyze stuff and I'll be like start to do a project it's like well if I'm going to do that I better record it because it's really good or um, uh, no, I'm not going to bother just playing around with that because when I use that next I want to do a video on it or, or whatever and I'll talk myself out of it. So today I was like, no, you're not talking yourself out of it. You're just going to sit down, you're going to turn that camera on and you are going to create. And I'm really glad I did because this has probably been, even though the artwork is not going to be the best artwork I've done in a long time, it's definitely going to be probably the most fun I've had. mix pretty well. I'm surprised that they don't get super muddy. I think I'll use my credit card scraper. Some beans in there. We do a little dot of yellow in the center. Hmm, I think that's doable. That's passable, I should say. Uh, go over to this one next. Ooh, these actually hold a fair amount of water for a tack on brush. And they have a nice point. I'm glad I got into these today. the color? I think that's the color I used. Well, maybe not. It's such a pretty palette though. I actually will be, uh, will be excited to, um, to use it again and to, when I use it up, I say when I use it up with the air quotes that are in my mind only, because um, when's the last time I used something up? Because I'm ridiculous, uh, but it would it will be nice to have that really pretty printed palette to put some other colors in. She actually sent me an empty one, an empty palette. It's a 24 palette, 24 color palette that has her brush work on it. It's so pretty, and uh, that will be nice to put. I don't know what paint I want to put into that, but. Maybe my Shinhan. I like my Shinhan watercolors quite a bit. and But I put them in a tiny little Altoids tin, and I don't really like working from those tiny Altoids tins unless I'm, unless I'm traveling, and that's kind of my, like, I don't have the space. But it's kind of like, I've already put them in there. I feel like I need to use them up there before I put them in. And you're never going to use all the colors up identically, so... I don't know. I get myself, like, in these little hung up, you know, these little hang-ups, the hang-ups over nothing. It's like, why don't I just fill the palette with the paints that I want to? But it's like, oh, there's always more paints coming in. Maybe just wait and use, you know, put something else in there. But it's like, why don't you put something in there that you really like that you know you're going to use? I don't know. I mean, the excess is bothering me. But I also feel like such a hypocrite to say the excess is bothering me when it's like, I clearly enjoy using the supplies and reviewing these supplies. That's kind of pretty, just the way it is. I like that. Um, I think maybe I'll do all these back petals as one. This one might be my favorite, knock on wood. I kind of like this one. <laughs> what am I going to... This will be my watercolor despair video. <laughs> I was kidding in Sat Chat that I was going to... Um, I was going to have a new class and title it Watercolor Despair. <laughs> But you don't, the only people that would get that joke is if they watch that chat too. 
Other people are going to be like, oh my word, is Lindsay okay? Does she need an intervention? <laughs> Does she need a therapist? Probably yes to all the above, but no, I'm really fine. Everything's fine. All right. Uh, water lines. I have not been happy with any of the water lines I've put in any of these bottles, if I have to be completely honest. Let's see what else we have for brushes. Maybe I need to like play with a different brush. <laughs> when in doubt, let's see what the other brushes look like. Let's use a nice flat brush. I like a good I like a good three quarter inch to one inch flat. I'm gonna wash the sizing out of it though. When I'm reviewing a product, I'm also thinking about who is this product for and what's the purpose of this product and what's the best purpose of this product. And I'm thinking that her brushes are really, these, these Christy Rice brushes are really good quality. Um, and I'm thinking that the paints, the paint palette, the paint selection, which is not a selection that I would have put together. Um, but I do enjoy using other artists' bespoke collections because it just kind of, I don't know, kind of gives you a different way to look at things. Um, I think it's definitely kind of like a, a get out of your rut. And I think think with the kind of art for joy's sake mantra, it's perfect. It, it works perfectly for that. I get it, I guess I'm saying. Oh, that's crooked. She's crooked. She's so crooked, she could go to Washington. Hardy har har. Let's wash that brush off. I've got some brown in there. I picked up some brown from the stem. That's not what I want. Call it a reflection. <laughs> That's what we'll do. I feel like I need to define the foot of this as well a little bit. It's a little, a little too, a little too sketchy, a little too suspicious. I like the strokes you make with a flat brush. I feel like they're very deliberate. All right, mm, yeah, we're, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. I don't want the I don't want the waterline to be too like strong and distracting. How much water do I want to have in there? How much water do I want to have in there? I just don't know. I don't want them lined up. I don't want to create like a tangent with the things lining up that's not pleasing to the eye so if I like had that water line this water line right at the same level that would not be pleasing I need to go higher or lower I think I want to go a little lower because I don't want to have the water line the leaf in the water line because then it, the leaf would rot and get gross so I'm just thinking of like a little bit of reality there I'm not a very delicate Painter. Oh shoot. Yep, well, I just went beyond my line there. What the heck, girl? Ah that let's see if we can scrub that up. I can't I don't think I can leave that. Oh yay. It worked. funny some splashes and the sploops I'm fine with but other ones I'm like ah that's not what I wanted at all hmm. all right I am not hating this which is good let's finish up I gotta do those petals, those remaining petals there. Going in with this brush here. What I do, another thing I like about the set is it has a lot of unusual brushes. So I think that's kind of fun. Um, so that if you're buying a set, you're not just like duplicating what you already have. And they all seem to be pretty useful brushes. Like when I did my brush, brush, set, brush set with Craft Ammo, I made sure to have um, really absorbent brushes, vegan brushes. I didn't want to use animal hairs. Um, so I used a synthetic squirrel hair because they're very absorbent. 
Um, I did use Taclon for a couple of brushes. These are Taclon, which is uh, snappier, but less absorbent. Good brush. It just depends on what you, you know, the purpose of the brush, what you're using it for. But I definitely want to have brushes that were not going to just duplicate the average brushes somebody had in their set. And I feel like this set is also like that, where, because, you know, a lot of times if you're buying something to support um, a content creator, then you're buying it because they're they're selling it and you want to support them. You're not necessarily buying it because you actually need more brushes or you need more of this or that or whatever, which is, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to do that. But I think it's even better if the, the product that you're buying is something that's different and not just copying what you already have in your stash because then you're you know you're multiplying the the value of your supplies and you are making the rest of your supplies a lot more versatile that way and I'm glad because I was like I was I was like oh, I hope that I like these products because I mean she's a fellow youtuber it's like I don't want to I don't want to throw somebody under the bus I don't want to feel like uh Sometimes you get things into review and it's just like, oh, they are not, this is not what I thought it was going to be. This is not, this is not the best. Um, like I just got, I got the standing desk, right? I said standing desk to come into review. And I, because I, I never thought that I would really like one. And I always turn down the requests to review. Um, because I'm like, I don't think I need this. But then I used some standing desks at a retreat I went to. I'm like, oh my word, I love this sit-stand desk. And the company that made that actually reached out to me for a review. And so I'm like, yeah, I thought, okay, definitely. Um, I wouldn't want to take something that I didn't think I would use or I didn't think I would like because I feel like that's not going to be that helpful. But I liked it. I used it. It's wonderful. I still use it. Um, very, very handy. And so they asked if I'd like to review the chair. And so I'm like, oh, I like the desk so much. I probably like the chair too, but I don't like the chair and I still have to review it. I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, it hurts my tailbone. And, and I think what it is, and I did notice that I was having like some tailbone pain at the retreat, but I thought it was just because I was really relaxed. And so I wasn't like walking as much as I usually do. And I was just kind of like, uh, like I was on vacation, I was just kind of taking it easy, and I'm like, well, it's probably just because I'm not, um, not being as active as I'm used to, and I think it's because the chair is not a cushion chair. It's a, um, it's like got the mesh instead of it being like a padded cushion, like chairs, office chairs used to be. It's like that stretched mesh, so it's kind of like you know, like a trampoline kind of is the only way I can describe it. And I don't know what it is about that, but it's like my tailbone is sore when I sit in that for any amount of time. So I think it's a, it's an ergonomic, it's supposed to be an ergonomic chair. So I think that I either don't have it set right, or maybe it's just that material's not right for me. I don't know. It's, um, and like, you're supposed to have it reviewed in a certain amount of time. And I kind of, I think I need to contact them. Like, guys, I need some more time. Something is not jiving with me. I'm either not... I don't know if it's me or if it's the chair. And like part of me is also like, I why did I accept this? I'm not a furniture channel, but I am an art channel and that was like an art, you know, thing. I, I just love the idea of getting er ergonomic stuff so that we, I think people should be comfortable and should have a place to set up that they can work. And I know my audience is older, uh, my age generally or a little bit older so it's not like you're going to be sitting in a hard wooden chair that's you know not great for you not great for your posture so yeah I either want to figure out how to make it so that it is going to be really ergonomic and you know be helpful but I find myself pushing that chair out of the way and using my regular my regular old padded office chair when I'm on the computer or working at my standing my sit stand desk So I don't know, maybe if your bum's a certain age, you need the padded kind and not the meshy kind. Maybe people that have like 30 year old bums are like, hey, no, the meshy kinds are great. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I'm not like a, like completely sedentary. I walk every day a couple miles and you know, I'm a pretty, I don't know, averagely fit person, I guess. 
So I don't know. But, and then I also think, well, I, I feel like I'm um, fairly fit. And if I'm, if it's not comfortable for me, then somebody that's, you know, watching my videos that's maybe older than me or um, has any sort of like health or fitness um, struggles, this might not be a really good fit. So I don't know. I'd like to save people the money if they're thinking about buying it. It's not going to be right for them, but I also don't want to like misrepresent something if it's just me, you know, that's having an issue with it. All right. I think I like that. I think maybe just a little pen to um, zhuzh it up a little bit at the end. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm actually going to take a little lunch break and then come back and we've got two more cards to finish painting and then do some details and yeah, this will just be putting on the background when you're cleaning your studio or washing dishes, I guess, type of video. We all like those sometimes, don't we? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to take a little break, and uh, but I'll be back here in a second for you guys. Magic of YouTube and all. I decided for the rest of these that um, I would use some rubber stamps to do the foliage because I thought it would be kind of fun. And um, I just thought it would be kind of fun. This is kind of a tried and true stamp set that I love for this technique. But then I realized I also have some ones I've never even used before. So maybe I'll use ones I haven't used before because I know what's tried and true. Um, I have used those. I just grabbed a few stamps that I thought would work really well. Uh, yeah, let's do, let's do, have I used this one? I don't think I've used this one yet. So I really love the uh, the company Rubbernecker. I don't think they do rubber stamps anymore. I think they only do clear stamps, but I had grabbed this at uh, Stamp Show a few years ago. I haven't been back to the Stamp Show since before the pandemic, so um, I have no idea what's going on. What's going on there? Uh, and let's do this one here. I'm going to fold this so I don't accidentally stamp on the back side. And I probably ought to do a little bit of tape to keep it from opening up on me. I mean, I'm not going for perfection here. I'm just going to kind of try to get some inspiration going because I felt so devoid of inspiration lately. And honestly, it was really hard to come back to the studio. I stopped to take a lunch break and um, the sun was coming in <laughs> on the through the window. And so I just laid down the couch in a sunbeam like a cat, basically. And just kind of, uh, I don't know, vegged out. And then I guess I wasn't done vegging out and I decided I would, well, I wasn't gonna go upstairs, but I needed to use the bathroom and my daughter was in the other bathroom downstairs. So I went upstairs and then, I don't know. I was just like, uh, I don't feel like, I don't feel like working anymore. <laughs> I know, how, how whiny am I? Most people don't have that choice. Um, so I lay down and I was comfy and I was cold, so I didn't want to come back downstairs and uh, it was a thing. I was just, meh. Oh, I hate it when I get like that. But anyway, I'm back at it and um, yeah, I'm just coloring directly on here with my new color twos. And I'm going to stamp this. Now this has actually like another sprig that's coming out, but I'm going to see if I can make that work with the design here. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine because I can use a small brush. I'll take this little one here from the Freer, Free From Fear brush collection. I'm not really sure about the watercolors, but I mean, they're fun to use, but I definitely would give the, um, I would give the brushes a 10 out of 10. See, this is another thing too. If you're not very comfortable with uh, painting freehand, you can always uh, start off with a rubber stamp and work that way. You know, start off with a rubber stamp as the base of your design. I don't usually use really small brushes. Uh, start off with a rubber stamp as the base of your design and then work on from there. Well, I was kidding that I was going to do uh, a class called Watercolor Despair, <laughs> so maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. I don't know. I do appreciate you watching. I know you're probably uh, thinking, oh, I don't think I'm in the right place. <laughs> this is not the Lindsay that I know and love. What happened to her? When's she going to be back? Summer? <laughs> I 
haven't even, well, I've checked it on my phone, but I haven't even checked my email and computer yet. Usually that's where I start off for the day, but I just kind of felt like if I, if I started off checking my email, then I was never going to get down here to the studio. And, um, I just felt like I needed to, I needed to get to the studio. I did, I did do a little like co early morning coffee check of the, of my email to make sure there wasn't anything. No art emergencies, heaven forbid. <laughs> Usually doesn't happen. I'm adding some little details where the stamp got a little smudgy. I'm just kind of, um, I'm just kind of freehanding, I guess. I just kind of going with the flow, trying to go with the flow. I'm not a very go with the flow type of person. I'm kind of like a bull my way through like a, uh, like a, I was gonna say like a snowblower. I guess that's about right. Not a snowblower, like a snowplow. I just kind of like force my way through a lot. I don't like feeling apathy. I don't like, I like to push myself beyond that. I guess we all feel apathy sometimes, but, um, but I think that's a very dangerous place to be. Apathy and complacency. I don't, I don't like to spend time in those lands. Mm, I think maybe some little spots of color. All right. I'm liking that all right. That's kind of cute. Something different, right? We gotta do something different sometimes. Now I could spray this with water and stamp. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's take, uh, ah, I'm gonna have to retake you down, but let's take an envelope because I wanna have coordinating envelopes because I think that's kind of fun. And let me grab my spray bottle here. I'm just gonna give us a quick mist off camera. That's a really fine mist one, kind of like what hairdressers use. And I'm just gonna Oh, that's not really pretty, but <laughs> it's better than nothing. Yeah, whatever. What are we going to do? It's fine. It's about right for today. <laughs> okay, there we go. Get a coordinating envelope. <laughs> Such as it is, it's a coordinating envelope. Uh, and it helped clean off the stamp, which is, I think, a good thing. All right, let's get our card back. Mm, anybody still there? <laughs> anybody still watching? <laughs> You've probably fallen asleep. That's all right. That's all right. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to watch a video to fall asleep to. This is another rubbernecker one I haven't used, and I think it will fit in. Well, I have used it before, actually. I think, oh, it is kind of, it is maybe kind of big to fit in one of those. I don't really have the space up above, but maybe, maybe on that one. Hmm. Well, we'll, uh, I'll think about that. I think that, I think these... Yeah, I don't think I have enough height for that one. Well, let's see here. Okay, we're gonna go to a tried and true. I love this, I love this stamp. Okay, that will fit. This is from an old company called Ink Boutique and they had the prettiest stamps and I always just loved their designs. Um, sadly, they went out of business and it was interesting because I was listening to a video by the owner of Stampscapes. He does, sometimes he'll go through old, um, I think I'll do purple on this one. I like that color combination, even though it's kind of Queen Anne's lacy here, but I'm gonna do the colors I wanna do. Uh, he owns Stampscapes and he does these, these kind of show and tells sometimes of old stamping magazines. And it's so fun because I just, I've been stamping for a long time and I miss the old, the old days. Um, I found stamping to be much more, I don't know, interesting and weird and quirky and I loved it. Um, and so he was talking about the company addicted to rubber stamps. And that's where I bought a lot of my ink boutique and CDs, which is the same company. They just changed your name stamps. And they were, he was saying that once a company started selling on addicted to rubber stamps, they were usually out of business in like, um, Oh, something like within a year, six months to a year. And that's really what happened. Um, I got a bunch of these actually on a really good price on addicted to rubber stamps. But I guess what they do is, they buy stuff at a discount and then they, then they in turn discount the stamp supplies. And then 
they the small stamp companies will no longer stock those brands because they they can't compete with the prices that the online sellers sell at. So he was saying that a lot of companies like if they sold with an online seller, and this is like back in the early 2000s, that a lot of the uh, brick and mortar stamp sh stamp stores would no longer would no longer work with them because of that. I got kind of a messy situation there, so I'm gonna try to tidy that up. I have to thicken this little guy out. This, uh, I don't know what happened with my my vase here, but it got a little chunky at the bottom. No, it got a little thin at the bottom. It, it needs to be a little, a little chunkier. Fill in some painterly marks. There, isn't that pretty? I like that. Um, yeah, so I thought that was really interesting. This company went out of business. I thought it was too bad because I loved their stamps. They were very, very pretty. And actually, AC Moore, another store company that went out of business that I really enjoyed, they used to... Um, I got this is a stamp show, too, for $10. They used to sell this brand, and they would actually... They actually had a... Oh, that's so pretty. They had a... Like a kit, and it was, like I think, around $40. Oh, I love the smell of a good quality stamp. Um, and it was about $40, I think, and it had like 10 stamp sets, 10 like big stamp sets, like double, like it would be like 20 sheets like this. And I think it might have come with like an ink pad and some other stuff. Oh, I think that's too, shoot, that's going to be too tall. Oh, that's going to be too tall and that too. Oh, darn it. That's not going to work. Well, shoot. Maybe. Actually, hmm. I'm just thinking, mm, no, shoot, it's too, it's too wide. We'll, we'll get back to you another day. Also, it's clear stamp. I don't know if the clear stamp will go as well. That's a bummer. But I wanted to use that. Well, you know what? That's the thing. You grab out a bunch of different supplies because you don't know what's going to work until you give them a try. So let's try this one. Again, that is a little too, it's going to be a little too tall. Hmm. Don't you wish I figured this out before I turn the camera on? Oh, this one will, let's do this one. This will work. We can remove that guy. And we can add on this guy. And we can do some lovely pinks. Dipping my crayon in the water. I really should use these a lot more. That's a thing. I think what was really getting me down was it's like I have I have time. You know, I have time. I don't have little kids running around anymore. I've got time. I've got space. I've got you know studio full of every supply I could want. Uh, it's uh, I've got I've got affluenza basically. I've got all this stuff. I've got all this time. I've got everything I could possibly need, and my ambition has taken a sabbatical. I'm sorry, I don't mean to complain. Gosh, I hate it when I get like this. But I do appreciate you. <laughs> I do appreciate you watching and offering your ear. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, and now we need to add, I'm gonna do, I'm, I've been doing blue water in these, not the color of the glass for some reason. Uh, kind of like it. I'm going to just go, I'm going to put water in and then I'm going to drip the color in and see what that does. Also, I'm going to pull a little bit of that out. Uh, let's see, a little bit of this blue. Doesn't want to flow very well. Maybe I don't have it wet enough. Oh, probably mumbling too. You ever in these situations where you're just like you are hypercritical, hypercritical of everything that you that you do that you produce. I'm kind of right there right now. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of the red though, just to give it that bottle color.
I realized a commonality in these paints with some other paints that I own. They remind me a lot of the Arteza pan paints and quite a bit of the old Meaden pan paints that are no longer available. I wouldn't be surprised, not all the colors match, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were from a similar, uh, the same factory. Because most of these, a lot of these companies, I would say most of the companies, the new brand new companies are having their paints made by another by another company. That's just how it goes because it's just really expensive to make your own paints. How about one of these guys? I think, yes, this will work out well. Uh, so, I wouldn't be surprised. That would make a lot of sense. Let's do this. I wonder, can I? Oh, I don't even need to make it shorter. I can fit in just like that. So I'll just watch them out side by side and, and double check, but the, like the texture of the paint feels very similar. The look of the paint in the pans feels very similar. So it's one, it's a, it's, and it's a brand that you don't see that often. I don't see that, um, maybe do like a really pale pink. Let's see what, if we start with pale pink, how that looks. Uh, so it is, it might be something new to you and it might be something that you enjoy. I like to throw some new colors in and then use a the color I've already used because then that brings harmony and it kind of circles everything back around. Kind of like if you like listen to a comedian and they uh, they'll tell a joke and they'll bring up something and at the end of their routine they bring up something they bring the same thing up again and bring it full circle. Same thing with art. It's satisfying. It's satisfying when you when you do that when you look at your work and you've brought something full circle. Yeah, that's not my favorite, but that'll do. But that's alright because I can add some details. Now I feel like I want to spread that around a little bit. This is a different look. I like it. I have to say, just looking at all my supplies out on my table right now does, does spark a little joy. You know, this messy table that's been, I feel like, empty for days of joy. I'm so melodramatic. Hmm. You could see, like, the white filler in the paint as you wet it. Kind of rising on the surface of it. Do I want a little bit of green? I do like this green color that's in here though. It's really nice. It's really fresh. Adding just a few brush strokes here and there, I think really gives it that painterly look. So if you're not, if you're just kind of dabbling in, you can kind of add a little bit of your style. And then if you do need to go in and paint anything, it's gonna, it's gonna kind of match a little bit better. And I'm gonna go back in with this flat brush here. Gotta be careful not to leave my brushes in the water. It's a bad habit. So, and I do notice that like, I might tend to do that if I don't have my paint puck, because my paint puck has a little grippies, the paint puck rinse cup. Let's see, now I don't want the same level of water. Like I mentioned, I don't wanna have a tangent here. Like I mentioned earlier. So I'm bringing it shorter than these two. I want them to line up. If it lines up with that one, it's not that big of a deal. But I don't want to line up with the other ones. Throwing in some refractions just to give it a little bit of a glassy look. Oh, I think that's really cute. And that was pretty quick, you know, because we did all that stamping. Hmm. All right, we've got one more card to finish. And we've got, uh, let's see, how many cards is this? One, two, three, four, five, six cards. So we'll need to do five more envelopes. Which are kind of fun, I think. Oh, you know what though? We could use those those uh, stamps that are too big for the cards on the envelopes. So that that's all right. That would be nice, right? Ooh, I got a little smudge on this guy. And you know what? I painted this. No, I didn't paint it on the wrong side. I was like, did I paint that on the wrong, wrong side? I kind of felt like I did, but 
No, I didn't. So I've got a sp I've got a, a smudge there. So I might just spatter on this just to just to fix it. Um, I wonder. Gosh, would that one fit? Because that's really pretty. Not really, because I've got that as that big sprig down there. No mind. That's all right. And this one. Well, you know what? It would fit if I don't, as long as I don't ink up those two little sprigs there, this will fit fine. That's what I'll do. So by that I mean, we're going to, I'm going to wet this just to make sure that I get, not, I'm going to do everything with those two little pieces right there. And take our green that we've been using. All right, see how I'm not gonna get ink on those two guys right there? And I think I'll just stick with that purple theme because I like it and then I won't have to worry about my envelope so much. It's like they're all, they're all gonna match just fine. Put a little bit of teal onto some of the leaves. I think that's just kind of a pretty combination, especially with the bottle we have going. And we'll just stamp that like that. It's gonna just make it on the card. Hmm. Alright, now that needs a little work because it's looking a little rough. But it gave us a little bit of a guidepost. Uh, bring that stem down. Feels kind of thick now. I'm actually going to move, be able to move this around because I find it a little easier to. Hmm. Oh, I don't like that leaf, but that's all right. That's all right. The ugly leaves make the pretty leaves look even better. A little bit of purple. I'm gonna stab in some little shapes here just to give it a little bit of oomph, give it a little bit of zest and life. Might not be feeling zesty, but we can paint like we're zesty. Right? Fake it till you make it, they say. And all this teal into the stem. Hmm, I think that's all right. I don't like how high that is, though, uh, maybe I'll just do some little petals and stuff on the ground just to kind of um, help balance it a bit. Just nondescript little smud, little sploop, 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 sploops of color. I don't know if it's effective, but I think it balances out the composition a little bit better. Let's do our little water line. Let's do it right about here. This will help us weight the bottom as well. really wonky. Why does that look so wonky? Uh, that looks really wonky. I need to fix that somehow. I'm gonna try flipping it upside down. That's my trick. 
that's my trick to make your bottles look better. Flip it upside down so you can clearly see what the heck's wrong with it. One neat trick for improving your watercolor bottles. That should be the title of this video. And they'll be like, that's not a neat, that's not a, a hack because hack videos are not three hours long or however long this one is going to be. Hmm. One quick trick to get out of an artist funk. Is more like it, and it's not even a quick trick, and it's debatable if it works. <laughs> uh, another way to balance things out is to do a little spatter. I also think some yellow spatter would be nice. I've dirtied both buckets, both sides of my water bucket. It is a madhouse, friends. But I definitely feel better for painting today than from just, you know, if I was to just sit around and wallow. This set doesn't have a yellow ochre, so I'm mixing the uh, brown or delve with the, um, the golden, no, what's it called? Uh, Thrive? Maybe I'll add a little bit of red into that. Give myself a little bit of a raw sienna fish mix going. Yeah, we're gonna call that good. I think. Now let's do, oh, maybe just a little bit of the yellow. You know, maybe do a little neon yellow. If you don't like it, don't worry, it's neon, it'll, it'll fade away. <laughs> okay. Sometimes spattering helps, you know? It, uh, if you don't like some of the spatters, you can blot them with a paper towel. If you uh, want to spread them around a bit, you can do that as well. Hey, it's fine. Happy birthday, you know, whatever. It's, uh, it's not the best thing in the world. It's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, so now we need to, let's make, we don't need to, but let's make some envelopes to go with our masterpieces. <laughs> I think we've got six cards. Let's see. I'm making sure we're not missing any. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. Yes. Okay. So I need, but I've already done one, so I need five. Welcome to Remedial Math with Lindsay. All right. So we can use, we can use stamps so we can get a chance to use like this one because I was kind of bummed that I couldn't use that one, but it'll be fine on an envelope. I just need to make sure it's not going to go where any of the important stuff goes. You could do it there. Yeah, and there'll still be room for a return address. I'm going to set this. I just have a feeling that if I keep this stack, I'm going to regret it. Oh, and I was going to step on it upside down. There we go. All right, let's see if the crayons will work on this. I mean, obviously, you could use stamp pads. Stamp pads would be really pretty on this. I don't think I'll be able to see this little... Actually... It's probably a better idea to use a stamp pad with this because um, there's little details that will probably get filled in with a crayon and you'll have to scrub it out and it will be a thing, but I'm going to go ahead and keep using what I've been using because sometimes the simplicity gets it done. You know, like if you're, if you make things really overwhelming, then you just don't want to do anything, right? And I don't want you to be sitting there like, what, you want me to get out a stamp pad now, Lindsay? Have you lost your mind? I can barely get out of bed. You want, me to get a, you want me to get a stamp pad? No, I'm done. I get that. I've, I've been there before where it's just like, you know, no, I don't, I don't, I can't I, deal with one more thing, one more supply. It's just, uh, it's too much, I've had enough. So I get that. I understand that. So I'm going to just use my crayons. Um, I did get a little bit of red where I wanted green, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to put in a little bit of another green. And I think sometimes, I think that's where I would get frustrated with card making is because it would seem like when I go to make cards, it seems like it takes me so long. I need so many different supplies. I don't know how this is going to look. Um, and then I'd end up spending all day and then have a card, one card to show for it. And I just get kind of frustrated. Now that is not what I was after. So let's see if we can save it with some watercoloring. 
Yeah, it would have been less work if I just went ahead and stamped it with an ink pad, but here we are. Don't get too juicy on the on the envelopes because they really can't handle it. It's a thin paper. Even if it feels textured like your watercolor envelopes, it's not, it's not, uh, oh shoot, I got way too much water in there. It's not designed for that. I'm just going to do some really sloppy roses here. There's some other flower in there and I decided it was going to be red like a rose. So now I'm kind of like, I guess that's going to be a rose too. A couple rose buds in there. Hmm. Do I love this? No, not exactly. But it's an envelope. It's just going to get thrown away. I'm not going to stress about it. Reality. Reality card making. Of course, <laughs> the amount of water I have on this. God, just don't do this. With the amount of water I have on this, it's probably going to seal the flap shut on the back. So um, we're going to put that in the... Better let next time pile and move along. And let's do this one because I think this one worked pretty well. This one worked pretty well for stamping. I think, did it? I don't even know anymore. I think I'll stick to the crayons and not the paint so much. Hopefully this video uploads all right. Because sometimes with the, the longer videos, like the when they first publish, they go, they get kind of like hiccupy at the end and like the, the video freezes and it will do that for like the first couple hours that it's up and then it goes fine. And you can, and I've uploaded stuff and said and kept it as a private video or unlisted video be, to see if I could, I could kind of wait it out, but it never seems to, um, to work that well. You know, it doesn't, it still will do that until until I um, go ahead and publish it. And then it's almost like, it's like, we're not bothering processing the rest of this video until. Until uh, it's public. We're not gonna waste our YouTube resources or something. I don't know if that's the case, but that's what it, that's what it seems like. There's some little grasses in there just to give it a little bit of, fill in the space and do a little bit of A little bit of purple accents. And yeah, these aren't my best cards I've ever made, but still, I don't think anybody would complain about getting one in the mail. And if they were, if they would complain about getting one in the mail, are they really people you wouldn't be sending cards to? I know I wouldn't complain if I got one in the mail. I'd be like, oh my god, somebody sent me a card. That's awesome. Okay, now what's another fun one? Oh, this is one that we didn't use because it was it was too thick. The the bottom wouldn't fit into a jar. I'm gonna so many stamps clean, but they clean out they clean well with a with a uh, toothbrush and water. Uh, this one I want to do in blue. I think this would be really pretty in like this aqua and then like the um, the kind of um, cerulean blue. And when you sh if you ever sharpen your watercolor crayons, save the sharpenings in a palette, and then you can just add water and use them like a watercolor palette. So they're a very versatile product, and they're not that expensive when you figure all the pigment that you're getting. Blick sells them open stock, which means you can buy them individually for. I think a dollar, is it two fifty or a dollar? I don't know, it was it was less than I thought. I'm thinking it was like a dollar fifty-eight. It was like crazy. I think that's a crazy low price for these. Um, or you can buy sets. And generally sets are, are cheaper, but for that price, I'm not sure if they really are where they have the open stock price so low. At least it was last time I checked. It might be different now. So, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. This one I might do twice. I might do one on this envelope and then on another one because, ooh, that's pretty. I do want to spread around a little bit, so. Um, I'm going to take it right off the crayon. 
Yeah, I like that. It's pretty. You can do a little few grasses if you want to in there, or just leave it. I like the I like to I like to throw in the grasses. 90 degree angle with your brush on the paper. Yeah, and then that just I don't know. It kind of lets somebody kind of get a little sneaky peek about what is going to be coming up in that card, right? You know there's no bill in that beautiful envelope. I'm going to spray this with my water mist. Uh, not over anything, hopefully. And so, let's see, it's all misty. Misty and pretty. Get another stamp there. And, you know, it's a little bit, like, mushier, but I think it's fine. In fact... Do another one, maybe do triple and, and quadruple. Let it let it just kind of let it just kind of fade off. Do one more spray. Plus, it just helps you not have to clean the stamp so much. There, I think that's nice. It's not you know nothing to write home about, but it's well you could write home about it in the card that matches this this envelope. All right, let's do another one. Now, now, what haven't we used or what do we want to use again? Hmm, so many stamps on my desk. Well, I like this one a lot. Oh, you know, it could go that way and then it could be, um, it could be like underneath where you want to write your address. I think that would be really sweet. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll leave a mess in my studio and that way I know when I come down to my studio the next day there's a place for me to start because when I'm in my funks, um, like I am currently, I get, I kind of come to the studio when I don't know what to do. And so, oh that's perfect, I'm just going to leave that just like that. Um, and I don't know what to do so by leaving a mess out I kind of start on a hill so to speak. So instead of just coming to the studio and like, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know where to begin. I have a place to begin. I'm going to start on that hill. I'm going to um, go into that again or do I? Maybe I'll do that. Oh, that's pretty. And then maybe, no, maybe I'll do another one. Maybe I'll do this one. Oh, maybe I'll do this one. You know, it just gives me a place to start. Maybe some of these tips have helped you in a similar art funk. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, it's fine. I mean, it is. It's an envelope. It's fine. All right, six. Actually, I think I made seven envelopes. Is that? Did I? Let's take a look at our cards one more time. Then I'm gonna go clean up. Well, I think I will clean this mess up tonight because. It is, it is pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, so we've got this card here. Oh, you know what? Do we want to do any white? Maybe we want to do some uh, white pen. I think, or maybe even some other gel pens. I think that I will get out some white pens. And then we can, we can add little accents to things. Why not? So our lights over here. Ooh, are we on camera? There we go. Uh, so maybe just little. We'll do some little, little pen accents. We could also do metallic pens. There's lots of different things we could do if we're not happy with the way things are looking. Make sure your paper's dry if you're gonna do that. I mean, oh, I think it's marginally, marginally better. Now, let's see what's next. This one right here. Oh, yeah, this one is something. This one's a little boring. It's boring, and yet uh, it's a bit much at the same time. How can that be? How can it be boring and a bit much at once, you ask? I don't know, but it is. So we'll just add some little highlights here and see if that helps her. I think that's a little bit better. Um, sometimes you'll need to go over your white pen again over watercolor or watercolor crayon because the colors can leach up through it. But I think that's I think that's passable for a card. Why not? 
running out of places to put things. This one, uh, this uh, this is our little <laughs> this is our little despair. Um, but you know, I think I'm gonna leave it other than a little white highlight. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, just just branches. It's winter. That's how. That's that's my mood. That's my vibe, as the the kids would say. Yeah, why not? I mean, there's no law saying that your little bouquets have to include flowers. They can just be barren branches. Um, let's look at this one. I actually really like how this one came out. Um, maybe just, I, I think I will do highlights, but honestly, this one's one that I feel doesn't really need much, if at all, anything. I mean, you can always go in with colored pencil, add detail, but for what it is, a card that you're going to mail away, I don't know, I, I feel like it's fine. This one does need some work, in my opinion. I think I'm going to do a black pen. Let's see, how fine is this guy? We'll see. We'll see if it's fine enough. I'm just going to, I'm just going to doodle. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe I'll make this uh, kind of like have almost like a daffodil because I really didn't know what I was doing here for flowers so I think I'll make them like little daffodils but obviously they're red. I don't know if you have red daffodils but in my little fantasy world there are red daffodils and that's what we have got going on here. Ah, uh, let's see. Hmm, I like that better already. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but... I hope this has not been too much of a downer. Now I'm going to be self-conscious about posting it, but I'm probably going to post it anyway because I don't want anything better. I haven't come up with anything better. In this dry spell of mine. I've been relying on stuff that I recorded months ago to give the illusion of creativity. <laughs> yeah. But I guess I guess it's normal. We all have we all have moments. This is not some fine pen work, by the way. This is just... Uh, I don't know about that. It's kind of like a, just a, a slump of petals. Hmm. Maybe I will add a little bit of yellow. I think... Um... I wonder if that's dry. Let me just give it a real quick blast. And I think I'll do some yellow and then maybe even spatter some yellow because it feels like it just needs a little bit of life. Let's do this. And there's no law that says you have to um, you have to wet the crayon if you don't want to. Like, you don't have to wet your crayon marks. If you want to leave those um, bold like that, you can. If you want to go... Oh, gosh, it's too much water. If you want to go in and uh, add some water to it, you can. Sometimes it's fun just to make some marks and let it be. Let's see, what else we have? Oh, we've got this one right here. This one's not too bad. 
Actually, I like that one a lot better more. A lot better more. I like it a lot better more. Um, hope there's nobody watching this channel trying to learn to speak English. You sp you'll speak better more English if you listen to this channel. Which is not, which is to say not good English. That's my sparkles. Mm. Ah, that's fine. I like it all right. So then I guess the only thing left to do is sign your name and mail them off because sometimes I, I find that that's like, just like, it's very cathartic to just uh, put it out into the world. You know, I'm putting this video out into the world. I'm getting this out of my body and I'm putting it out into the world. You know, write a note, put a stamp on it, put it in the mailbox, put it out into the world. And um, maybe you can just kind of like seal up those, I don't want to say seal up the bad vibes, you don't want to send your bad vibes to somebody else, but you could, you could push away the cobwebs and the dust and whatever it is that's holding you back and keeping you from creating. And, uh, and you feel good because, you know, when you hear from those people you've sent cards to, hopefully you'll hear from them. Um, and even if you don't, I mean, that's not the point, but when you hear from them, that will be a nice little spark. And it will also be a bit of um, a doorway opening to human connection because I really feel like that is what we are lacking is the human connection. And listen to the, um, what was it called? The Machine Stops, if you're, if you're interested. That's, that was, it's a, it's a fairly quick audiobook. It would be even quick, quicker to read. It's a novella. It's a very, very short, well, for, short story. It's not even a novella. Um, yeah, human connection is important. I don't think we get enough of it. I don't think we have much community these days. And especially if you're after the holidays where you've had a chance to see people that you love and miss, and now you're kind of facing down the doldrums of winter and you don't have any plans made with anyone. Um, it's good to, it's good to get out there, make plans, see people, and, uh, and remember what it's like to be not a hermit. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.